Okay. Hi, it's Annie Painter again, and this is the most exciting um, video that I have made in my series on color and design because it's the one I'm using for my own work and the possibilities for application are endless. Um, I call it glue and go collage and the reason I call it that is because I noticed, especially when teaching my adults, that often we worry our work to death. And so faced with a blank piece of paper and some beautiful papers that you have painted and you're ready to make your images and create a collage, people plan it to death or worry about, is it just right? And I thought, how could I get people to just get freer and more creative and spontaneous? So I made some rules up called glue and go collage. And I also wanted to share um, an inspiration from a book I love, obviously, called Free Play, The Power of Improvisation in Life and the Arts by Stephen Nakmanovich. And in this book, he talks about all of us having a muse and an editor. And he says, they're both important, but the problem comes when the editor comes before the muse. How do I get the muse to precede the editor? How do I get us to be more playful and therefore have fewer blocks to our creative spirit? And this is what I decided to do. Before I show you the how-to, let me show you the supplies so that you know what, what is essential and what might be useful. I've made many videos that would be useful, but the two that you'll need to actually do are the painted papers and you can find them on YouTube or on my um, website making oranges, painting greens, painting violets, and mixing neutrals and painting papers in neutral. You'll also need to have the lesson on tooled papers. So with these wonderful scrapers or things you make yourself and brushes, or actually you can order things online, you'll be able to make gorgeous papers that later you'll cut out and use in your collage. So those are the essential lessons. Um, and later I'll show you these when I begin the work. The tools, the supplies that you'll need for this lesson are pretty simple. It's essential that you have a liquid, white liquid glue that dries clear and actually works. So when you're squeezing it, it's not your life's work to go squeeze and get a little drop out because you're going to be wanting to put a lot of glue on the paper so that you can glue and then just go with your design. So this is really important. Make sure your glue really works. And if you're working with kids, I would suggest they don't share. Everybody needs their own glue to glue and go. So if you're going to afford to have each kid have a glue, that's great. And a supply of various sized scissors. I use little tiny scissors as well as bigger fist scars or some of mine are even as long as this for cutting big paper. It's pretty simple. And because your hands are going to get a little gluey, just a wet rag to keep yourself wiped up. That's what you'll need for supplies. I'll show you a number of projects that range from cutting a piece up for instant designs that are real surprises to sending it to a website and having it come back as wearable art or fabric. Um, so let's clear the decks now and I'll show you how to do this. Okay, we're ready to glue and go. Of course, we start with the studio rules and I want to make sure that everybody is doing his or her best, respecting the tools and materials, the ideas and each other. And this is really important because I have done this project with as many as 25 to 30 people, teachers, in a workshop, back to school workshop, or in an entire classroom of 35 kids in groups of five or six at a long piece of black butcher paper. So respect doesn't mean that you're going to cordon off your own little section and not pay attention to anybody else, but it does mean that as you finish your part on this, you're careful to connect with the next person so that it looks like a unified piece. But we're still going to do it spontaneously and glue and go. I developed, um, in order to help people know what to do and how to be spontaneous, a few techniques I'd like to invite you to try. The first one is called broken plate. I came up with that because of when I was four years old, my uncle 
um, sat me up on top of the refrigerator and let me break a plate that had a crack in it because he was going to throw it away anyway. And I've never forgotten what fun that was. And I thought, well, what if we threw a plate down and it broke just like a puzzle and you could see the black lines between. So I've, I've uh, got some papers here I'm going to start and you can watch me do that and we'll show you what I mean by glue and go. Here are the criteria or the steps that I'd like you to think about when you're teaching or doing glue and go. Number one, you're going to drizzle glue all over the section that you're going to work on. You're going to do it right down here. Not put the glue on the pieces of paper that you're going to paste. You're going to drizzle it on the paper. You're going to, without deep thought, you're going to just add a section of broken plate and pat it down and then Working off the last section, you're going to continue and try all these um, techniques. So here we go with glue and go, broken plate. Important that your glue will work. And I'm going to start with an orange, I think. I have some pieces here ready to work with. So uh, moving on to technique number three, stitching. Um, I call it that because it's a way to unify a section or sections of your work. So I'm going to put some stitching across here. And I, again, I'm just going to glue and go. Three, four. I've got four stitches across there. What should, color should I use? I think I'll just use some green to pull that together. One, two, three, four. Let's let that hang off. That's nice. And let's let that one hang off. And this one can stitch right to the next one right here on the screen. Stitching. All right. Patterns and repeats now, number five. And I'm going to be a little more courageous. You see I've got some glue on here ready to go kind of off to a diagonal and a curve. Um, for this one, I'm going to pick up some of this color that I like here. And I'm p using a piece of tool paper that already has uh, repeats on it. So I'm going to cut out some of these images, elements, and put them down. In order to make it a repeat, all I need is another one of anything. But to make a pattern, as you know, I'll need to have a rhythm to it. So it might go rectangle, circle, rectangle, circle, or um, violet, green, violet, green, or whatever. You know, a pattern can be anything that you can find, or maybe we just call this the pattern, dot, 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 dot. So we'll take a look and see what I could do here. I think I'm going to go with a tiny bit of green in here. Um, this. I'm going to glue and go. And glue and go. Because some of these are cut up, Afterward, um, we turn them over and measure on the back, and then just cut up. And surprising new compositions occur. Uh, make sure that your glue is underneath all of the edges, uh, so when they're cut, they don't pop off. I like this. Okay, let's see what's next. Oh, this is one of my very favorite things to do, is to look at these gorgeous papers and just cut out elements that seem to be beautiful and stick them on as is. So let me see what I can find here. For example, look at this. This is a natural. 
The only hassle is to try to make sure that you can actually not have too much black showing. So when you get these kind of interesting shapes, to kind of think about um, where the glue goes so that you can stick other shapes underneath and cover up some of the black. See what I mean here? Let's look at that. That's going to be great. However, there's a lot of black here I don't think I want to show. So I'm going to challenge myself to use that right there but to figure out something there. So I'm just going to glue like this, but leaving some of the green edge that I can stick things under. So. Now, let's see. I'm going to continue with this, continue with a repeat, and you see I'm going back and forth through the techniques whenever I need them. Oh, it'll be pretty, like a mosaic. I think one of the wonderful things about this is that it really does happen for you, at least for me, that when you play by the rules of glue and go, you can't be thinking about out here. You're thinking about just this little, this little section right here, and what do I do to make it work with this, and how do I fill it in, and, and what technique shall I use, and you're just really concerned with this part right here. At the end, you might look back and go, that's not bad, or well, that doesn't work or whatever, but you can use some of it and you've had this relaxing, wonderful muse, time with your muse. You know, I talked to you about buttoning down things. There's an area right now that needs a button. It just looks raggedy and I love to have things hanging off the edge, so I'm going to find a button to put right there. And it's great for you to think about color theory, especially if you've had a chance to look at my color wheel, color theory uh, uh, video. You'll see that you can, you know, decide, well, gee, do I want to have just color, this color family and that color family or everything or where would I, what color would look really interesting with this? Or you can just do it intuitively. But for now, I really would like to have a green one, a green button. what I want. Let's see what's next. Oh, inventions. Let me stop for a minute and show you my, some of my inventions. Inventions are whatever you want to do. Simple, that simple. Um, I have some other pieces in here that are uh, elements I found. But let me show you one invention or so here we can look at. These are inventions in which I would just take pieces of paper and make a beautiful unit that I might just slip into the whole piece like that. I like these separately. I'm basically thinking this could become an applique for something you could wear and make it out of cloth. But this in, this, in truth, would be like an invention you could stick right in there. Here's another one made of some of the tooled papers. Both, All three of these are tooled papers. And this is a great invention. Something like this could easily you know, occupy a whole chunk of a, a piece of glue and go. So I'll see what I have here that I could do for an invention. And I'll make it over here before I put it in. Let's see. Here's scrap. Keep an organized workspace. <laughs> Not as easy as it sounds, especially with this one, but this one's easy to clean up. Now these are found things that I might use for my inventions. These are beautiful elements I found in different pieces and cut them out before to get ready for this. All right. Let's see. Hmm. 
This is going to take me a little while. I'm going to start with this one. There we go. And because I have a, a little edge here, I'm going to be able to slip this under. But I really want that to be my edge, so I will get rid of this one. Now you see I'm planning a little bit. That happens when you get to the point of inventions. So I'm planning a little bit so that this will overlap. And there we are. turn it around now so I can see this edge and work on it this way. Now at this point I'm going to use all these techniques and finish the piece. I will repeat every single thing that I've done here and combine them and just see if I can fill the space in a pleasing way by gluing and going. Again working off of something I've just done. There, it, it's very doable, but it does take some management of supplies and space, teams, rules. I'm happy to share that. So now remember I mentioned to you that I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to measure and mark cutting lines. I will have no idea what the um, pieces are going to look like, but I know from experience they're all going to be really interesting brand new visual designs. It's an amazing way. Um, friends of mine who do quilting have marveled that that would be a marvelous way to get new ideas for quilts. Um, fabric or just beautiful covers for kids' journals um, or even just putting them in a frame or a mat on the wall. You'll see. I'll show you some great examples in part two. I'm going to turn this around again and finish it up. But you notice this awkward corner down here. Now that we have all these amazing edges, I'm going to have to work on that. I am enjoying the fact that I am using complements across the color wheel here. This green with a touch or a punch of the red, orange, or red. So these are ways that you actually can benefit from having a little experience with color mixing and color theory. Um, certainly not essential to do the project, but gives you some more options for your design ideas. Now you notice that I didn't glue these down because I'm anticipating something. I'm not sure. Maybe something I find like that. Yeah. Something like that as I finish up this corner and that corner and then we'll take a look at it and um, get ready for the part two where I cut it up and show you what new new things to do with this here's a good another good example look at this area right here it's pretty awkward busy time for another button after you do this a while, you'll start making papers, anticipating what you're going to need, which is exactly what I did here, so that I'll have some buttons when they're most needed. And I'm going to put it in the same angle that the other ones are. These little awkward areas that are like triangles, they really work really well with small tesserae or uh, like paper mosaic pieces, a way to fill an area that's for which you don't have a shape. You just make little tiny pieces and put it down like a mosaic. 
time. Now I will uh, clean up my mess, organize my papers, make sure that all the edges are glued down, and be back and show you the whole piece. And I'll show you actually how I'm measuring it and, and on the back, and then in video number two, we'll cut it up and reveal the different designs that we have here.